What's going on guys and welcome back to another earnings report analysis and today we are breaking down Roblox because Roblox just reported their earnings and the stock is up over 25% in the pre-market and actually yesterday in the after hours this stock was up over 30% which is absolutely incredible. Now this is not a small stock right? You can see here that it's got a market cap of $45 billion dollars and actually, when we take into consideration this 26% jump, which is probably going to happen when the stock market opens, we're talking about a almost $60 billion company. So for that to shift at such a great amount off one earnings report, there's clearly something going on there. When we see here that they've got a short interest of 8%, well, then it starts to get quite interesting, right? So... There's potential that a lot of this increase is driven by shorts covering their positions in the after hours and in the pre-markets because effectively the, the earnings report was better than what was expected. So we're going to get into the details of that earnings report and see what exactly is driving this growth. And I want to start us off with the profit or loss statement and more specifically revenue. So we can see here that revenues for the three months were $509 million and we compare that to a year ago when revenues were $252 million, that's a 102% increase in just a year, which is absolutely phenomenal growth. However, I want to tell you something, right? This is a little bit of a deceiving figure. And it's to do with the way that Roblox have to account for their numbers and the way that they have to recognize their revenue. We'll get onto it shortly, but effectively, Roblox isn't actually growing at 100% sort of income like you might believe that they are. We'll come on to that shortly. Flicking over to cost of revenues, in terms of their expenses, to be honest, there's not that much exciting going on here. Cost of revenues have increased in line with, rev with actual revenues, which is to be expected. Developer exchange fees have also increased, but by a lesser degree. One interesting part here is research and development costs have increased by almost three times. So there's a significant increase and research and development costs I tend to view as reinvestment into the business. And that's because research and development costs is all to do with innovating and developing new products and effectively trying to find drivers, drivers of growth for the business. So the fact that we are seeing an increase there isn't necessarily a bad thing, actually. Sales and marketing expense has actually only increased by 50%. And I mean, it sounds ridiculous, right? Because 50% is a large increase. However, They've increased their sales and marketing expenses by 50%, but revenues have actually grown by 100%. So when you look at it in that way, well, then it's quite a low amount of growth. Not only that, we've got sales and marketing expenses of just under $20 million. Compare that with revenues of $509 million. Well, they're not spending that much on marketing in order to generate this revenue. So that is very good. Clearly, they've got a very strong brand and they're not having to sort of pump their brand to uh, to try and gain new users. So that is all very good. They did, however, so they, they, they produced a loss in the quarter. So that was a loss of $77.5 million compared with $51.5 million a year ago. So despite the fact that their revenues have actually doubled, their loss has actually increased, which isn't great to see but they're focused very much so at the moment on growing the business. So that is not all that surprising. But now I want to flick you across to the balance sheet because what I was saying earlier that the revenue growth that we saw of 102% is not actually representative of the amount that the business has grown within that quarter. And I'll tell you why, right? So on the balance sheet, we can see here deferred revenue and we've got $1.6 billion of current deferred revenue. And then we've got uh, 550 million of non-current deferred revenue. So they've got around $2.2 billion of deferred revenue. So what is deferred revenue? Because we're seeing it here within the liabilities section of the balance sheet, right? So deferred revenue is effectively cash that they have received from their customers, but that they are not legally allowed to recognize due to accounting standards as revenue at this point in time. So it has to exist as a liability, effectively because they have not yet fulfilled the obligations, which would allow them to recognize this cash that they have already received as revenue. Now, if all of that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever then I do not blame you for it because at the end of the day it is just boring accounting however it is very important and I think it's probably best illustrated through use of an example and therefore luckily for us Roblox have provided us with one so we're going to run this through so let's say for example if a user spends 25 real dollars on the Roblox platform to purchase 2500 Robux which is the virtual currency within the game and that user spends these Robux on the platform to purchase some durable virtual items right for 2,300 Robux, or the equivalent of $23. 
Now, can Roblox then recognize $23 or even $25 as revenue? Well, no, they cannot, unfortunately. What they have to do is they have to recognize that revenue over the lifetime of a paying user. And this is to do with international financial reporting standards, all of that good, boring stuff that I won't bore you with today. But in effect, right, they have to recognize that $23 over 23 months at $1 per month. So it is spread over the lifetime of the user. And therefore, the, re the effectively, the revenue that they are recognizing in a current quarter is actually cash that they would have received many quarters ago. And effectively, it's sort of rolling up into the current quarter. And therefore, revenue is not a good indication of the growth of a business because actually if you see a large growth in their revenue it's actually probably to do with the fact that they've received a, a growth in their bookings and actual cash received many many quarters ago and that is why it's very important to look at bookings rather than revenue as an indicator for how quickly the business is growing in the current quarter so to summarize if you want to know how quickly the business has been growing in the past, look at revenue. If you want to know how quickly the business is growing in the current quarter, then look at bookings. And that is why when you see the headline figure that Roblox has grown by 102%, you have to understand that a lot of that growth actually happened quite a while ago, but we're now only finally seeing it in the income statement. In terms of actual cash received, well, they already received it. And why is this so important? Well, because bookings are actually a better representation of how quickly the business is growing. So we can see here that bookings grew 28% to $638 million compared to $496.5 million last year. So 28% growth rate is very strong, but it's certainly not 100% growth rate, which we have actually observed in revenue. Right? And it's nothing to do with any shady practices or anything like that. It's all down to accounting rules, right? And it's just the way that it is. But what my point is here is that you need to focus on bookings growth rather than revenue growth for a company like Roblox. Because as we all know, the value of any business is the present value of all future cash flows. And bookings are a better representation of the cash that has actually flowed through the business. And that is best illustrated again through the statement of cash flows. So we can see here for the nine months ended 30th of September 2021, Roblox recorded a net loss of $356 million. But when we come to see the adjustments in arriving at the actual cash from operations, there's a few changes, right? So we've got here stock based compensation of $222 million. Now that's an awful lot of stock in which they have given to employees and executives rather than pay them salaries, right? So they'll receive a salary as well, but effectively, rather than pay them significant bonuses, which would be a cash outflow to the business, they would rather hand out stock, uh, which unfortunately dilutes current shareholders, right? But it's sort of seen as a lesser of two evils when uh, when a company is in its early growth stages. So it is what it is. It's We add it back because it's not a cash expense, but it is still an expense of sorts. And therefore, you need to take this into consideration when you're analysing a business. Anyway, when we move further down, we can see here deferred revenue is an adjustment for $616 million. And that is cash that they have actually received in the quarter, right? but which hasn't been recognised as revenues because of the model that I was speaking to you about earlier on. That results in a net cash provided by operating activities or cash from operations of $537 million, which is absolutely insane. That's a lot of cash that this business is generating. And if you wanted to find a free cash flow from that, you'd take off the capital expenditures of $48 million, and you've got free cash flow of around $490 million, um, which is not too bad at all for those nine months in the year, right? That's not bad at all. If we were to annualize that, we're probably looking at around $650 million um, for the entire year, which is which is pretty impressive. Now, what is even more impressive than that to me is some of these figures that we see in the key metrics. So we can see that Roblox attracted an average of 47.3 million daily active users, which was 31% higher than in Q3 of 2020. So that is incredible growth compared to a year ago when a lot more people were forced to stay at home and therefore had nothing better to do than to play video games, right? You fast forward a year and everything has opened up, kids are now playing outside more and so on, and yet they've still recorded a growth in daily active users of 31%. So that is staggering growth. Even more impressive than that though, 
is we can see here average bookings per daily user. Now remember what I said as to what bookings were. This was people purchasing Roblox, right? Or Robux rather, the virtual currencies. Average bookings per daily active user was $13.49, which is absolutely phenomenal, right? So the average user is spending $13 per day purchasing these virtual currencies, which blows my mind. Now, of course, I believe that this would be a mean and this, therefore this is going to be a heavily skewed figure. I'm sure that there are some uh, kids with rich parents that are absolutely overindulging in the amount that they're spending and we get an average of $13.49. Regardless, that is absolutely fantastic. With that being said, though, we do see a decrease compared with this time last year. So there's slightly less people or there's slightly less spend um, per day on the platform. But realistically, it's a couple of percent and it's nothing really to pay too much attention to at this point, I don't think. And when you see the reason for that decrease, well, it makes a lot of sense. So we can see that the small decline was due to a shift in the geographic mix of our user base. OK, so what does that mean? Well, we can see here that engagement growth was highest in the Asia Pacific region, growing 89 percent over the last year. And Asia Pacific users represent approximately 22 percent of global engagement. Now, I think it's probably fair to assume that they're, well, clearly the numbers show us that the people in the Asia Pacific regions are spending slightly less money than those in the US regions. And that probably makes a lot of sense because I would imagine that people in the US have more disposable income than those in the Asia Pacific regions as a generalized statement, right? Of course, don't jump on my back for that. It's a generalization. But by and large, right, that will be the case. And that's what we're seeing here. Now, coming on to the technical chart, we can see that over the last sort of six months or so, Roblox has been trading between this range of around $92 all the way down to somewhere like $77. And it's traded in between that range by and large. I think that we're going to open today above this sort of $91 range, which is one of the levels of resistance. But if this stock pushes past that sort of $99 area of resistance, then I fully expect this stock to start creating new all-time highs, which is all to do with momentum because I'm not entirely convinced that the earnings report that was just released is um, is warranted of a 30% increase uh, in, in the share price. But anyway, that is uh, trading stocks. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. And until next time, thank you.